Hello and welcome to the Smart India Hackathon 2019 Designing Digital Training Program. My name is Archana Gatigar and I work with Persistent Systems as a technical trainer. We have been discussing about the topic of Node.js and in the last session I talked to you about the concepts of server side JavaScript and what is really behind Node.js, what is single threaded architecture and so on. In this session, I will be mainly demonstrating on the different node APIs, the different ways of working with them like what is asynchronous execution versus synchronous execution. We will also see a complete example on how you can build a REST API using the express framework. So, let us begin. The agenda for this session is the file system API which includes asynchronous calls and synchronous calls. We will see what are the differences between the two types. We will see how to write a web server in node, uh, specifically how to work with the express server and lastly we will see how we can connect to MongoDB from node.js and get some data. Let us begin with the FS module. The FS module contains a lot of methods and some of them here are listed like fs.make directory, fs.stats, fs.read file, read directory and so on. Now how do we make use of this asynchronous methods is interesting. We need to add the required statement like we have already looked at in the previous session we need to add the required statement for fs module followed by the method calls. So, let us say I call the read file method, we can provide a path to the file that you want to read and the second parameter is what is important. The second parameter denotes the callback function, all right. So, remember all IO operations and that includes the file IO are asynchronous in Node.js by default. So, this will occur in a separate execution, it can be a separate thread or it can be in any other asynchronous manner, but it will not be part of the main single thread that is executing. And hence, this callback is required, that means after file reading is complete, this callback will be executed. All right. So, we need to define mandatorily this callback which signifies the next step to be done or the next piece of code to be executed after the file IO is complete. Now, this callback, let us have a look at this in detail, has two parameters, the error and the data. So, they are also referred to as error first callbacks. The first parameter always is if is the error object that means if some error has occurred then this object will be set with some properties that define what the error was. And if not then the second object will be set that is the data that has been read from the file, alright. So, here we can then make use of or we can access the data from the file by referring to this variable here. Let us look at a demo. So, let us write this code to write to read a simple file. Let us say fs equal to require fs module. So, this is an inbuilt module provided by node. So, we do not need to do any npm install or write any specific code, we can directly write require statement and call the APIs. I will say fs dot read file. I have a sample file with me called as data.txt. 
So, I define that if you have a different path, you can also provide the entire path over here. And the second parameter is the callback. So, I define an anonymous function here as a callback. The first parameter is always error and second is the data. So, we read the file and let me say if there is any error then print the error else we can print the data. Now to understand whether it is really happening in a synchronous way, I am just going to add some console statements. And let us add that it is ends here. I am going to run this file now, node demo. So, it is printing it in the binary. So, we can give the file encoding here utf8 which is going to take care of this and print out the data that the, is present in this data.txt. So, this goal of this documentation, this stuff is getting printed here. But look at the statements of program call stack begins and program call stack ends. So, although it was a very small file with having very just, just a small bit of data, still it was executed in asynchronous manner that is outside the main call stack. So, we can see here the two statements get printed and then sorry this one. So, we can see these two get printed and then you have the file data getting displayed. So, that clearly shows that file reading is occurring in the asynchronous manner. So, all the methods which are present in the FS module, they are by default asynchronous. So, if you talk about read DIR, that is again it takes path, it takes certain options and there is a callback. Okay. So, we do not need to do anything specific in order to make them asynchronous. By default, all these are asynchronous. Let us look at another example. Let us see read directory. So, I already have certain statements in place and I will say fs dot read dir. The current directory is what I want to read followed by again a callback because remember this is also asynchronous comma files will be returned back and I will display the list of files. Let us run this. So, here again the program starts ends and then we have the list of files in the current directory. So, it is displaying files as well as directory. So, my dir is a folder here that I have and that also is getting listed here as part of the current directory. So, anything that takes a callback, it simply denotes that this will occur in a synchronous fashion. So, there is another API that is file stats which takes the file name as 
the first parameter and it will display certain properties in the format of an object called a stats object. So, there is stats dot size, it has properties to find out whether it is a file or whether it is a directory. Okay. So, here I am running this stat on two things, one is on this file and second is also on the directory to see what are the properties of the directory as well. So, if we run this. So, this is properties of my dir that is it is directory is true, is it a file it says false size is 0 because it does not contain anything and properties of data dot txt is 356 bytes and the other two flags. You can clearly check here that uh, the properties of my dir are getting listed first that is because this got executed first and then we had the other one getting displayed. So, there is no sequence that is getting maintained here because both are occurring in a synchronous fashion. So, this is occurring independently and this is occurring independently all right. So, this is a different style of execution that is asynchronous and we need to get familiar with this going ahead. Now, when we look at the documentation, then for every API that we see here that is make directory, there is a corresponding synchronous version available. If we have make dir, there is make dir sync. If there is read dir, there is read dir sync. Similarly, for file reading, there is another API read file sync. So, what this means is for every asynchronous version, there is a synchronous version available as well. So, this is especially in case where we have uh, where the requirement is that certain things need to happen in the synchronous way wherein there is a dependency and without that you cannot go ahead with the rest of the execution. So, in such cases you might want to put certain blocks of data or certain blocks of uh, code in in the in these synchronous versions. So, here is the call to read file sync which takes the first parameter of the file. Notice there is no callback because callbacks are only for asynchronous functions. It will have a return value just like any other function that we are executed. So, the data read from the file will be returned back and hence we need to catch it in some variable all right. So, let us take a look at a demo of this. So, I will say fs dot read file and use the second version, the sync version and provide data dot txt. I will give the file format and print the file data as this. So, this will occur in sequence now all right. So, we will have line by line execution it will print this and then followed by the file I O that will read it from the file until that the next execution will not continue and only when it returns we will have the remaining statements getting called. So, I will say node. So, check out here same as we expected followed by the file data and then we have program ends. So, that is the synchronous execution for you.
Now we have seen uh, two main concepts, we have seen synchronous execution, asynchronous execution and now let us look at another concept in node that is streams. So, there are two ways in which we can read data by using the FS module. One, we can load all the contents at once which is called as buffering and store it into memory or we have incremental load loading of data or reading of data which is called as streaming. Okay. This is a very popular concept of node wherein in the first case that is the APIs that we have seen so far is referring to this first method. It is going to read the file maybe in asynchronous way or in the synchronous way, but all the data will be loaded into in memory data in into the into the memory and that can be later accessed or sent to the uh, to the user as a response or it can be further processed. But what happens here is data is read in chunks and that is why we call them as we call it as streaming. So, it is like a stream of data free, free flow of bytes ok you can imagine it like uh, like a pipeline with or uh, you know bytes being flowing. So, that is how uh, we have the source and a destination which will have data you know being sent from one source to another destination. So, this is the first type which we have already looked at read file which is going to take a call back. This is the buffering type and this is the second one wherein it is using streams. So, you have the data source and in chunks data is going to be produced and consumed by some other target here. So, the advantages of streams it, it is that it has a smaller memory footprint because smaller chunks of data are coming in and immediately being processed. So, not much memory is required. It has faster response time because uh, the data keeps on flowing in you know in, in smaller chunks and you, you actually need not wait till the entire file is read and then you start processing. You can pipe the data. So, which is a very popular concept in Unix, we can pipe directly from one stream and redirect it to another stream. So, probably you can have a file stream that is reading from a file and immediately pipe it to the HTTP response and send it to the user as user and you can immediately send it back to the user. So, these are some of the advantages. So, streams are mainly uh, two types, we have readable streams and writable streams. So, readable are mainly to read data So, for that there is an API for readable streams and here is the code for that. So, let us look at this by having a demo. So, again when we are making use of streams over the other methods, it will still use the FS module. So, we need to add the required statement and here I will create a readable stream, create read stream for the file data dot txt. Now, there is an important thing that occurs on this streams, streams emit events. Alright. So, node is based on events 
just like how we use JavaScript in the browser and it makes use of different events like click events, keyboard events and mouse over events and accordingly we write handlers for those kind of events. Something similar occurs in node as well. Here also we have events and we, we actually write handlers for these events. So here when we are working with streams, the streams also emit certain events. So when there is data available for reading, it, re it emits the data event. When the data is not available, that means it has finished all uh, reading from the stream, it emits the end event. So we have a data event, we have an end event and so on. So streams mainly work in this fashion, that is it is based on events. So here we are, uh, a list of events is provided here. There is readable event, data event, end, close, error. So in case some error occurs while, re while reading data from the stream, then it will emit out the error event. So if you want to do error handling, then you will need to handle this particular event called as error. There are the other methods which we can invoke on these readable streams. So let me write a handler for which event for the data event because right now we are interested in reading data from this file called as data.txt. So we add handlers by using a method called as on readstream.on and say pass the event and write the handler here. The handler will have the data available, we can say the chunk that is available, okay. Remember that this is going to read data in the form of chunks. So not the entire data from the file will be available here. It will come in the form of small parts called as chunks of data. So I can print that out here, next chunk of data is this. I will just convert it into a string, alright. We can set how much data that you want to read in the form of chunks. Like we can specify how many characters, how many bytes do you want to read. And we can specify that with the help of a very simple property called as high watermark. We can say high watermark equal to like we have defined here. And let me say 100. Let's run this file. So check out here, we have next chunk. So it keeps on reading it in smaller parts. So basically it has read the entire file in four parts, one, two, three, and this is the last one, four. Okay. So this is helpful when we want some processing to be done as in how the file is being read. So we need not wait until the entire file is read into memory and then you start working or processing on it, okay. So that is how we can make use of streams here which is an important feature in node. Similar to readable streams, there is also writable stream but before that we can write one more handler called as dot end that means handle the end event. This is mainly to ensure that we have finished reading the file and if certain things need to be 
taken care of after file reading is done for example you want to clear some buffers you want to reset some values then that all can be done on this event here that is the end event. So that is what happens we have the data event being emitted every time there is data available. So, automatically the data event will be emitted internally on this object called as read stream and when there is no more data available it will emit out the end event and that is how we will know that file reading has been finished. So, similarly you can handle the error event as well and do the error handling for this program. Similar to read stream, we also have a writable stream here. So, it is writing to some file and in the form of smaller chunks of data, we can write data to this file as well. Now, to ensure that all the writes have been finished and to actually flush the buffer and do the final write to the file, we can handle the finish event. So, mainly streams work with events and event handling. So, the same, the same we have it listed. So, writable streams can be HTTP response, it can be TCP sockets. So, you can read data from a file, you can write it to a socket as well. So, it is just a destination that you want to you know send the data through. So, these are the events and uh, these are the methods which are supported in writable streams. So, we have already seen an example of this. Now, let us move to uh, an important use case of Node that is how do we write a web server using Node.js and specifically how the express frameworks, express framework helps us to seamlessly do this. Now, how does node work as a web server? So, that is how we can pictureize this. We have a server that we are going to write. So, let us do a quick comparison with the traditional web server that we have. Okay. So, typically what happens is there is a thread pool which takes care of each of these requests. So, we have one thread which is serving one request. Okay. So, what this uh, leads to is a situation where all the threads are busy serving the requests and there can be certain requests in the waiting mode. As soon as the thread gets free, then it will start being processed. Now, one of the reasons why the threads are taking some time to finish or taking some time to uh, execute is because of the major issue of blocking IO. So, maybe data is being read from the database or you are updating the database in this particular request and that can lead to a bottleneck. And this makes the thread wait and hence also making other requests wait because of lack of threads. Now, what happens in node? In node, all IO calls are asynchronous. And along with that, all HTTP calls are also asynchronous in Node.js. What do we mean by this? What it means is any request that comes in is also asynchronous. All right. And there is no thread pool which is going to serve each of these requests. All the requests are going to be handled by the single thread that we already looked at earlier. 
it is also referred to as the event loop because it is like a loop that is executing all the requests one by one or all the events one by one all right. So, this it all the requests come to the single thread and if any of the requests are going to involve IO then we already know that it will be delegated internally to some asynchronous mechanisms that can include internal threads. So, most of the operations are IO based, it can be network IO, you are reading and writing to sockets or it can be database calls or some file related operations. So, all these go in the non blocking way that is they do not block the other operations in the flow. So, that is where a node is going to shine when there are when, when the scalability is an issue. So, a quick comparison here which is thread based web server, it holds the connection open until the complete request is processed and this often leads to a blocking situation and to scale up we often need additional copies that is you need multiple servers. Whereas, in Node.js a single server is going to service all the requests and mainly with the model that it follows where IO is handled asynchronously. So, let us build a web server using Node.js having seen the advantages that it has. So, there are two ways in which we can build a web server. So, one we can use the HTTP module which is an inbuilt module provided by the Node.js, but it is not a very convenient module and it does not have very easy to use methods. There is uh, quite a bit of code that you would need to write and are not a very easy to use module. But what is more popular is the express module which is a third party and available via npm ok. People have been using express for uh, quite a bit of years now and it is a very popular framework for building web applications ok. Internally it does use HTTP module at the core it does use it, but it is more like a wrapper for us it is more like a framework for us which has easy to use blocks of code where, where we can quickly plug in. So, let us look at how to use this express framework. Now, what is express? Express is a routing and middleware web framework where what we mean by routing is deciding how an application is going to respond to the requests all right. So, if the request is for the default application URL then you need to load index.html, but if the request is for slash about or let us say slash contacts then you need to go and load the corresponding file. So, deciding what to load based on the URLs is called as a routing. And express has some easy to use methods which help us to write the different routes and route handlers for our application. So, the steps to get started, we will be coming back to package.json in a while. But before that we need to install the dependencies for express that is we need to install the package for express and get started with this block of code. So, let us go ahead and do this. So, the first step will be to install express. So, npm install express the latest version can be used. So, you will have to run this which will take a bit of like a few seconds 
and install all the required dependencies. It will all be placed inside node modules, the folder that you already looked at. So, it will be placed here. So, express along with some dependent modules, which you, whichever it will have, it will be added in the same folder. So, I already have installed this. So, I'm going to directly start with the program. <clears throat> Let us start with adding a require statement for express. Writing a web server by using express is just 2 to 3 lines of code directly say new express app and say app dot listen to some port number that you want to define ok. So, by default it is going to listen to the local host uh, URL. But in case you want to specify a, a different one, then you can always do it as the first parameter here. The second is this port number that we are uh, defining. So, it is going to run on localhost uh, 4000 port number. Now, all HTTP calls are also asynchronous and that is the reason there is a callback here. So, as soon as the listen function starts executing successfully, we will have this callback getting executed. So, we will simply say server started on port 4000. Started and listening for connections on this port number. So, writing a server in express is as simple as this. So, let me run this. So, here we have a process that is running on this 4000 and you can see it is waiting for new connections. But if I browse to the URL localhost 4000, I will not really get any response. Why? That is because the server is doing nothing. We have not added any logic, we have not added any roots in this particular server script. So, let me do that. Let me say app dot get the default URL that is just simply slash will have a handler and this particular handler will have two objects. It will have the request object and it will have the response object. Okay. So, similar to how you would write a servlet code which has access to the reference of HTTP request and re reference of the HTTP response, something similar is what we have here. So, I can do a console.log saying a new request initiated which will be printed on the server's console and I can send a response say response dot send welcome to my app. So, this is one route that I have handled that is the default route for the application. Let us rerun the script with the changes. I will browse now to this URL. I will say localhost. 4000 and this is the response that I will get welcome to my app. So, this response is coming from this server script that I just now wrote 
and this is the console statement that gets printed on my server side. A new request is initiated. So, if I open another browser, browse to the same URL. So, it will be a second request that is initiated and the response would be right now the same that, that goes into the browser. So, similarly I can add more routes to my application, I can say app.get if the URL is slash contacts then we can say response dot send some contacts info and uh, like this we can have multiple URLs being configured. So, this is called as routing and defining routes in this way. So, whenever there is a get request, so by dot get we mean that this is a get request. If there is an HTTP get request for slash contacts, the URL is slash contacts, then this is how it will be handled. So, here I can write my logic to get the data or the way I want to process it and accordingly then send back the response. All right. So, again let me check now when I say slash contacts. I will get contacts info when I say products, I will get the products info. <clears throat> All right. So, these are my routes defined for my application, three routes I have. All right. So, now you can see as we are writing the code, we are every time uh, having to restart the server that is because the changes uh, you know will not get reflected. Now, there is a utility called as nodemon which is going to help to automatically restart the server. So, we have this called as nodemon which is going to monitor the script that is running and in case of any changes it will restart it all right, but it needs to be installed, it, it needs to be installed not like the usual way, but it needs to be installed globally. Okay. So far we have seen installing uh, you know commands by uh, installing modules by saying npm install express okay, or any other module that you would have done and this means it is going to be installed locally. Locally in the sense you will need to add a required statement and make use of the APIs. But when you want to install some modules as command line int, uh, as command line utilities, it will need to be installed globally. Okay. Now, what is the difference? The difference is like this. When you install something globally, then we say npm install nodemon followed by minus g flag. When you say minus g, it will be installed globally. That means we can use it as a command line utility as a command line utility. So, I can run commands like this nodemon followed by the script name right. So, that is what I have already done here. I have installed a nodemon by running this command npm install nodemon minus g and hence I will make use of this command to run this JS code. So, 
So here it is, it is watching it and if I make any changes and just save it, as soon as I save you can see it has restarted it. So we don't need to bother about this part every time we are making any file changes. Alright, so this is how we get started with the express framework and uh, we can send some response. So we can also send uh, files as a response instead of just simple text. So what I can do is instead of doing this, I can say send file and I already have an index file with me in the views folder index.html. So when we are working with an express framework, then you would you know generally have all the views related files inside a folder called as views okay that is the general convention. So I call send file and say index.html you will need to just append it with the current directory name followed by the path to the views folder. So now when I browse to the default root, it should give me this page index.html which has a h2 tag, check that out. So here is this, you can check the page source, it has this HTML page now. <clears throat> Alright, so these are all the uh, get related routes that you can define. You can also define how to handle a post by saying app.post give the URL and similarly add the handler here, okay. So all these uh, possible options that you can do here. Now when we are using uh, node as a web server, then you might have to go ahead with some template engines which will be rendered by the server side. Okay, so one particular template engine is EJS, you can even use uh, Jade as Jade or it is also called as Pug. So all those template engines will you will need to work with and uh, you know use the particular syntax to render the UI. But nowadays there is a, a, a lot of popular uh, frameworks that are coming into uh, in, in, in the market where the UI is written with frameworks like Angular, React and you know so on. So generally the UI part is taken care of by another framework completely and the server mainly acts as the REST server. So node basically the express framework is going to act as a RESTful server. It will only provide the data to the UI. And on the UI side, it you may use any of the frameworks or you may use an app which is going to take this data and display it the way it, it needs to be done, all right. So this is a popular uh, usage, use case you can say of uh, Node and Express. So we will go ahead and see a demo of how we can write a RESTful server in Node. So we have the basic code here written and few steps to get started to write our own uh, REST server. I will need a router object here from the express, we will say dot router and router dot root will define let us say slash users. And on this I can have different methods like get, dot, post and so on. 
So what this means is we are going to define URLs in this man in this manner. HTTP localhost colon four thousand say slash API slash users. If I say slash users and define the method as get, then I would want all the list of users back. Similarly, I can have a post request for the same URL with the data coming in in the request body. So this will make sure that I add a new data into the users database. Similarly, I can have a put request for a particular user and I can provide the name of the user that I want to update and similarly it can also be a delete request. Okay, so that is how we can have rest operations uh, defined by you know defining these different URLs restful URLs. Okay. So let us look at uh, the first two that is how you can make a get and how you can handle a post request in this. So here I have a root defined for slash users and I am handling the get part of it. Request response and I am going to use the same block for the post as well. right? So, whenever there is a request for slash users, I would want to return an array of users back. So, I have some sample users with me and I am going to define it here. So, whenever there is a get request, we will say response dot send. We can say send the data back. But as you know that uh, JSON is a very popular uh, response type nowadays, wherein data is returned in the format of JSON. Okay, that is key value pairs. So we say response dot JSON and we pass the list of users. Let us check it out. Now we are using a router object here which is part of the express framework but we need to set it to our app that we have created. Okay, That is not part of the program here. Let me say express and it is this app that is listening to connections. It is on port number 3000 here. So, we need to say app dot use for every URL that comes to slash API. I would want to use this router object which contains all these routes to handle my requests. All right. First, let me stop this program that is running and start this program.
all right so now here uh, just by fixing this uh, router uh, statement to a method invocation so we have now a port uh, so we have a server running on this port number 3000 now let me make a call to 3000 slash users before that there needs to be slash api and i'm getting back a json which contains the static set of values name and age are the properties so that's how routing works okay so this is the virtual path that i'm giving slash api and for every request that comes followed by slash api all the routes will be handled by this router object which contains one route right now that is slash users and it's handling get and it is handling a post request now how do we work with the post request okay when there is new data available to be added into the database then it would go into the post part of it okay so that we will not be able to try it from the browser but i have postman from which we can try adding some new data here post i'm going to pass the name and age here and click on send but before that we need to add code to handle the post request so to do that we need to first read the data from request body okay so to read data from the request body uh, we need to take help of another module called as the body parser by default it's not available we have to use it from npm so i've already installed that body parser going to say body parser as the module and set it for the app to use app dot use body parser dot url encoded because the format will be in the url encoded way need to give some default values and here i can read it I can say request dot body dot the property name which is being passed here name and I can read request dot body dot age. So I'll create a new object for this. I'll say and set the properties of this object. And simply add it to my list of users that I have. So this is going to simulate adding of a new user. Okay, so I have an in-memory set of data uh, which contains three users, and I'm going to try and add the fourth user into it. So let's check out. So first, when I have this, there are three users through postman i'm going to add a new user here say send so i haven't set any response so that's not going to display anything but let me go back and check my list of users i would have four users now which is with the new entry we can display a response as well by saying new user added all right so let's check out we have three okay so it will give you some response back all right so that's how we make use of uh, uh, the request body by using another module here called as body parser
So error handling is important while we are working with any uh, routing. So taking care of the 404 is by adding this block of code right at the end we say app.use and do not provide any root here and uh, this block has to be placed at the end of all the <coughs> URL handlers. Okay. And similarly to handle any internal errors, so the 500 errors, you will have an error object associated with that. Okay. So when you add this error object into your, uh, in, into the, into the route, route handler, it would take care of all internal server errors. So adding that into our code, pretty simple, just need to add this. at the end so app dot use any of the so if i try to access simply slash users you will get the page not found okay that's because it's directly going into this block where it cannot match any uh, you know root handlers and that's what you will get as the response similarly you will be able to add uh, the 500 related errors by making use of this block which can be added here what is the difference between these two blocks is here you have the error object which takes care of the error related part right Okay, so far uh, we have seen working with uh, in, in memory data, we had the data defined here statically, okay. But in the real world uh, applications, you would have data coming from the database, okay. So for that, uh, to in, in, in order to demonstrate that, I am going to take an example of the MongoDB, okay. So, we will fetch data, we will insert data into the MongoDB now, okay. So you need to have an installation of MongoDB with any of the versions above 3 and uh, you need to start this MongoDB server on your machine, okay. So install and uh, start this, okay, which is going to start on certain port number and we will write code to connect to this particular URL and try to read write from this DBs, right. Uh, that is one thing and second is we need to have a package which provides you the APIs, all right. So like we have used express in, in order to work with the routing framework, here you need to work with the mongoose package, okay. The package name is called as mongoose which gives you the API to read insert delete and update records okay so mongoose is uh, an an api which is uh, internally using another package called as mongodb it's more like a wrapper it has convenient methods it has validation layers okay so that's why we are going to use this particular package so make you make sure that you run this command npm install mongoose okay and so that you can directly require it and make use of the different methods so i have already installed a mongoose so i'm going to straight away add the require statement here So I'm going to add the require statement followed by 
connection code connection to MongoDB. Okay. So, check uh, where this MongoDB is running. So, I have it installed on this particular path and going into the bin directory, I have actually started mongod.exe. I have executed this file mongod.exe which has started the server, the MongoDB server and uh, it is running on this port number 27017 and it is listening for connections. Okay. So, I am going to connect to this now from my code from my node server. So, we will say mongoose dot connect and uh, the mongo URL I will provide. So, it is mongodb followed by the server URL which is localhost right now on port number 27017. And the database that I am going to work with is the user db database. This is what I will use. All right. So, because we are fetching data from database, let us comment out this static data. And whenever there is a request for slash users, then we need to run or, or rather we need to fire a query the db that is user db and get the results. So, I am going to do that, but in order to fetch the query or in, in, in order to fire the query uh, while using the mongoose package, it is mandatory to have a model file defined. Okay. So, here I have a model file already defined with me that is user.js. All right. So, this model file is used to define the schema that is how is the data or the user details going to be defined. So, I have couple of lines here that is require statement and then I use mongoose.schema and define the complete structure of the data. So, here you can see there are three properties name, address and age. Okay. So, this is how the data is going to go into the MongoDB with name which is defined as a string, then we have address and there is age which is a number. So, we need to define a model for this by using mongoose.model and uh, because this is in a different external file, it needs to be exported by using module.exports. Okay. So, this is mandatory, defining a schema is mandatory while you are working with the mongoose package. So, I have created this and placed it in a, a folder called as model. So, generally all model files are defined in this way, you would have a folder called model and you will have you know the corresponding files added here. So, first I will require this user file, model file by saying dot slash model slash user. Once we have this object user which is returned, now I can fire a query by saying user dot find. Find is the method which is going to uh, you know which is very similar to like a select query and I can specify my conditions that is which all records do I want. There are other APIs where you can find by ID, you can find by ID, remove, update. You can just find the first one that is returned first from the database and so on, right. So, I am using the first one, the find and the first parameter is a JSON which will define the condition and the second is my callback. So, remember all these APIs, DB calls are again asynchronous. And whenever there is something which is asynchronous, you will always have a callback, right? So, this is a callback now. Callback always has error as the first parameter and second is the data. In my case, it is list of users, okay? So, when you leave the first, uh, the condition empty, the JSON is empty. If it is in this way, 
it means fetch all records. If I wanted a specific one, then I could have defined here saying find all the records with name as John. This is how it would fetch the records. But right now, my query is for all users. So, let us leave it blank and check for errors. If there is any error, then the response will send back that error or you can handle it if that is possible from the program and return that as the response. Response.json will be the set of users now. Now, it was not a static data, the data which is going to come back, it is going to come back from MongoDB. Okay? So, a quick check in the mongoose shell to find out what all we have. So, there is one record present already. Okay, so, that is what we should be able to get in our program as well. So, it has restarted with all the changes, the user DB now. So, it is not static data anymore. So, you can see that what we got the result here on the Mongo shell, we are able to see the same in the browser. All right. So, that is the function called as find, which is used to fire a query to the DB. Now, similarly, we can save a record into the database. So, instead of users dot push, which was adding it to the static array. I will define now a new user, not a new object, but a new user. And uh, this user I am referring to the one that is from the model file. All right. So, a new user I am going to create and set the properties name and age all right and in case we are also going to pro provide as the schema c is the address then we can even add that request dot body dot address and to save the data we need to say user object dot save and of course, we will need to give a call back. So, there is not going to be any return value, but we can always check for the error object. If the error object is set, that means there is some error. Else, we can directly say response dot send new user add it right so let's check this the post functionality and i'm going to pass slash users let me pass a new value now and i'm going to include address and is send. We are getting the response new user added. Let me make a corresponding get request. So, we forgot to comment out the response here. So, both the records have been added here. <coughs> okay, so, earlier there was one record. Now, we have the new Anu as the new record added using the save method. Right? 
So similarly, uh, you can uh, go ahead and implement the, uh, re the rest of the functions like put, delete and so on. Okay. So, similar uh, uh, routes can be created, we can even write a different uh, root handler in this manner, we can say slash user and we can take a parameter, we can take a parameter like this which is name okay? and on that we can have get requests and we can have dot post sorry dot put requests and we can have dot delete right. So, we can pass a parameter and based on that we can you know have our updates to a record, we can delete records and even we can simply fetch a single record as well right. So, you can try out such similar set of routes. So, I hope this gave you an idea on how we can build a RESTful server in Node using Express and at the same time using the Mongoose API and connect to the database to read the records. Okay. So, of course, on the client side you can have any of the uh, frameworks which will connect and you know process this data. Alright, so the last part of this session uh, is uh, mainly how you can create your own Node project and uh, you know how you can define dependencies. So, we have seen that our project uh, has been growing, we have you know kept on installing a lot of packages and uh, you know installing them you know uh, with you know different commands. But all that is not required when you work with a big project obviously you will have a lot of uh, you know huge list of dependencies and all that can be listed in a single package.json. So, to create this to uh, you know have the initial structure ready you can run the command npm init ok. So, npm init helps you to create a new node project and it automatically gives you a package.json which you can manipulate ok. So, here is this package.json and uh, the important part here in this file is the dependencies. So, we can give our list of dependencies here which are you know in the uh, JSON format. So, comma separated we can specify all these dependencies and all that you need to do is simply run the command npm install on your command prompt ok. We do not need to install each of these modules one by one simply run npm install and it is going to pick up all the files all, all the modules which are which are specified in this package.json and it will install them one by one ok. So, this is how the project structure is generally uh, provided with a single json file having all the list of dependencies. We have come to an end of this particular session now. Uh, and to summarize all the points that we have covered, we started with uh, uh, looking at what are error first callbacks, how do we work with them in uh, node. We also looked at uh, the file API and uh, looked at the two different ways that is asynchronous execution versus the synchronous version. And then we looked at uh, some uh, an important concept called as streams in node.js and how do we work with them by using events. We also looked at how we can build a web server using express framework and lastly we looked at uh, how we can connect to the database and namely the MongoDB from Node.js. I hope you found this session interesting and useful. Thank you everyone.